Amen. Don't you wish you could do that? Proverbs chapter number three. Thank you, John, for that. Proverbs chapter number three. We're uh, actually going to be preaching through the book of Matthew on Sundays. Uh, we're taking a, a week off from that today for the new year. Preach a message dealing with the new year uh, from Proverbs chapter three. These are very familiar verses. Many of you here this morning could quote these two verses by heart. Uh, you know them. Uh, you've memorized them many, many years ago. And uh, if you don't know them, you ought to learn them. They're very easy and uh, really very short, but they are uh, dynamic and got a lot to it. And it's a good road map for life, a good road map for 2019. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. When I was uh, younger uh, and, and did some traveling and various di uh, different things, traveling back and forth from Springfield, Missouri, and doing and from Atlanta and different things, I used to buy the Rand McNally Atlases. How many of you have ever bought one of those before? Uh, you know, it was a big old... A uh, wide type book, and it had a lot of the states and different things. Matter of fact, maybe all the states, and it had the maps in there so you could figure out where you needed to go. Well, um, I bought those, and you know, I would buy one every couple of years because you know, roads change and needs to ha have updates and those kind of things. Then they came out with GPSs that you could buy, little devices, you know that you could buy. And so uh, after those were out a few years, I bought uh, one of those, you know, and we'd put it up on our dash and we would uh, program that thing and we would, uh, 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 you know, follow that map. Now, if it ever told me to turn right and then I, and I look over to my right and there's a big lake over there, then I didn't do that, okay? Uh, I've heard of people that has done that. Uh, uh, you don't have to follow that when, you know, danger is around. But Again, they messed up a little bit on some of those things. But anyway, I, I, we had that for a number of years. And now, of course, if you have a smartphone, uh, they have come out with a, a maps, Google Maps. And uh, that is the way to go, I'm telling you. You can just program where you want to go, what you want to do, and that thing will take you right where you want. And the good thing about that, it will update itself. You don't have to update that thing and, 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 and buy a new map and all that kind of thing. It, it is amazing how that thing works. And Google Maps and how it works. Well, we have a map. You know, if you wanted to go to, uh, if you wanted to go to, well, let me think here. If you wanted to go to Louisville, Kentucky today, um, think about Louisville, Kentucky. How in the world would I get to Louisville, Kentucky? Well, you would just program that into your GPS on your phone, your maps, and it would take you right there. It'd give you the quickest way. It'd give you the shortest way. Whatever you wanted to do, it, it would work for you. And, it, and, it's, and it's good. Now, if you want to go through life, however, you're not going to find that uh, in your Google Maps. But I've got news for you. You will find it right here. You will find it right here in the Word of God. And these two verses, I think, today will, will help us. Matter of fact, these two verses ha have been uh, uh, for travelers, and we're all travelers. We're on the road of life, and we're traveling through life. And uh, these two verses uh, have been found to be trustworthy and reliable. And I'll tell you this much, everyone who has followed Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 in their life let me tell you something. You have never lost your way or deviated from the right path. All customers who have used Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 have been completely satisfied. Nobody wanted their money back. You've been completely satisfied. It is a road map that will guide us through the new year and for all of life. If you'll notice in verse number 6, it says, In all thy ways. The word ways there speaks of a road. In, in all of our roads, in all of our paths, in all of our travels. And so it gives us the idea of a road map because we're all travelers. We're all on, a road, on the road of life. And so we need a road map to follow. And here in Proverbs chapter 3, we have this road map. 
Now, there are three signs on the road that I'm going to give you here today, and you can write these in your bulletin if you'd like and follow along. The first road sign that we see in our map here in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is how to meet the difficulties of life. How to meet the difficulties of life. Let me tell you something. Life is full of difficulties. Life is full of hard times. There's no way in the world that we could have imagined this year that Dinah would have broke her ankle. Uh, we pray that nobody uh, in 2019 breaks their ankle. Patty Rhodes calls me a few weeks ago and says, you won't believe this. I fell and broke my wrist. I said, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, uh, we, uh, uh, all sorts of other things. You know, people have been in the hospital. Uh, 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 kidney stones, right, Michelle? And other things. People have had tough times in their life. Listen, life is full of difficulties. Job said this, man that is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. No, no surprise should ever come into our hearts when we, when we have trouble. Uh, uh, we're going to have trouble. You may have heard about the man who constantly drank. He, he, was a, he was a drunk, and he explained that he drank only to drown his troubles and his sorrows. Somebody said, well, after you drown them, why do you continue to drink? He said, well, you don't know my troubles. I try to drown them, but, but they swim right up again. And how true that is. If you're trying to drown your troubles and your sorrows by drink, then you're in trouble because you're going to wake up and you're going to have, guess what, even more trouble and more sorrows. You cannot drown your troubles. You cannot prevent your troubles from coming. So you know what the secret is? Learning how to handle the troubles that come. Learning how to meet your troubles. Listen, the question is not what to do if troubles come. The question is what to do when troubles come. That's the question. Now, in verse number five, we have the answer to how to meet the difficulties of life. And you know what it says? Lean not unto thine own understanding. Lean not unto thine own understanding. Now, the word lean there has the idea of supporting oneself. Have you ever leaned on something? I'm supporting myself at the moment. I'm leaning against something, okay? The idea of leaning. Uh, uh, those of you who have a cane this morning, we got a few people walking around with a cane. What are you doing? You're kind of leaning on that cane a little bit. Uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Leaning, uh, supporting oneself. You know, many times when difficulties come our way, we try to uh, uh, figure it all out ourselves. You know what God says? Don't do that. He says, lean not into thine own understanding. It's almost like, uh, you know, we're trying to hold on with life and, 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 and trying to figure it out ourselves and climb up this way and the rope is fraying up there. And we're going to fall. You cannot lean upon your own understanding. You must, you must lean on something else, as we're going to see. Someone said this, everybody's worried about the economy this year. He said, hey, my hairline's in recession. My waistline is in inflation. And altogether, I'm in depression. Listen, when we lean on our own understanding and try to support ourselves, let me tell you what you're getting ready to have in your life. You're getting ready to have worry. You're getting ready to have anxiety. You're getting ready to have discouragement. You're getting ready to have depression. You're getting ready to stay in the valley, and you're never going to get up over the hill. If you want to figure it all out yourself, if you want to lean upon your own understanding, when difficulties come, if you are trying to figure it all out, then you're going to be in trouble. There are difficulties, ladies and gentlemen, that we cannot solve or handle on our own. When difficulties come, boy, they can exhaust our strength and the ability to cope with what we're going through. Now, Dana, uh, again, Friday, went to the doctor, and he said, listen, throw that boot away. Not literally, but uh, take, take that boot, start walking. Well, she started walking, and guess what? Ooh, that's a lot tougher than walking with a boot. 
And uh, she said, man, I tell you, you know, and, and if you've ever had a broken bone or back problems or some kind of issue, then let me tell you something. You are scared to death to hardly move after it's all over with. You ever had knee surgery and then you try to put weight on that knee or you, you've had hip surgery, you've had back surgery. Boy, you are scared to death and it messes with you emotionally and psychologically because the last thing you want to do is hurt, hurt that thing that, you know, is supposed to be healed. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, there's, there's times where we get to the point where it's just tough to go through. It's tough to cope with things. Have you ever heard of the phrase, a self-made man? Self-made man. Listen, uh, uh, I, I read that self-made men have a high risk for suicide. Self-made men are often self-supported men. They, they think they can handle and solve anything that comes their way. And when something comes their way, they cannot handle or they cannot solve. And, and, and they're, they're, uh, uh, they, they, it's, it's devastating. It's devastating for them. Let me tell you something. There's going to be plenty of things we can't solve. There's going to be plenty of things we can't understand. There's going to be plenty of things that's going to, difficulties that's going to come into our life. Have we ever made the statement, well, I just don't understand why that happened. Well, guess what? You, we're not going to understand everything and why it happens. That's why we're not supposed to lean on our own understanding. That's how we meet the difficulties of life. But I got news for you. There is a great heavenly resource for our uh, handling our difficulties. And let me show you what it says here in, in verse number 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. See, instead of leaning on our own understanding, we're supposed to lean on somebody else. And you know who that somebody else is? It is the Lord. And we're supposed to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. The idea of trusting the Lord speaks of hastily running to a refuge. Hastily running to a refuge. And who is our refuge? It is none other than our Heavenly Father. And the Lord Jesus Christ, we have a refuge to which we can run. Moses told the people of Israel, he said, The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Samuel uh, said, The God, or in 2 Samuel 22, David said, The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield, he is the horn of my salvation, my high tower, my refuge, my savior. David said that. The psalmist said in Psalm 9, 9, the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In the New Testament, it says it like this, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you, because he is our refuge. Psalm 55, 22, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. So, 2019, let me just tell you right now, there's going to be some difficulties. There's going to be some trials. There's going to be some troubles. There's going to be some burdens. There's going to be some things that you, we did not expect. There's going to be some things that we do not understand. So what do you do? What do you do when the difficulties come? You trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. That's what we do. We run to the Lord Jesus Christ as our refuge. Something comes, where do you run? Do you run to yourself and try to figure it all out or do you run to the Lord? Casting all of our care upon him for he careth for you. Instead of you trying to carry your burden, let the Lord carry it for you. He's a lot stronger. He's a lot bigger. He can handle it, let me tell you. There was a missionary who worked among the American Indians and he sought to, to learn their language. And their word friend, the word friend in this particular Indian dialect, meant one who carries my sorrows on his back. One who carries my sorrows on his back. Friend. And then we have a song in our hymn book that says, What a friend we have in Jesus. And, and listen to the rest of the word. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. 
Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. You know what we do? We try to figure it out ourselves. We, we, we sit around and we worry about things and we're anxious about things and we fear things. We fear tomorrow instead of casting it upon the Lord, instead of trusting in the Lord. We try to figure it out ourselves. It's like Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 6, you know, uh, uh, talks about don't worry about anything, pray about everything. The second verse to what a friend says, have we trials and temptations? Have you got any trials or temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Verse 3, are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do your friends despise, forsake you? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield you. You will find a solace there. In the highway of life or on the road of life, let me tell you something. Difficulties are coming, but the Lord says, I will be your refuge. I will be with you. You do not have to go through your difficulties in your own strength and power. You have a refuge in the Lord. And in Him, we can trust. Trust. Second Chronicles 15.4. Great story. It says this. But when they, in their trouble, did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought Him, He was found of them. He was found of them. And let me remind you this morning that God will always be found in the time of trouble if you turn to him, if you trust in him and do not lean upon your own understanding. That is how we face the difficulties of life. Secondly, how to maintain the devotion of life. I see this road sign here and I see this in these verses. How to maintain the devotion of life. You know, one of the dangers that we face on our road of, of living is that we will lose our fire. We will lose our devotion. We tend to wander off. Uh, we tend to stray away from the Lord. And we tend to lose our devotion. Sometimes the older we get, the colder we get. Now, hopefully that's not the case, but it happens. It happens. To lose our devotion, to lose our fire. There was a great preacher of yesteryear by the name of Gypsy Smith, and someone said, or asked him one day, uh, why, why has God used you so much? He thought for a minute, and then he said, I guess it is because I never lost the wonder of it all. I never lost the wonder of it all. And let me tell you something, folks. As Christians, we must never lose the wonder the wonder of what God has done for us. We must stay on fire uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. We must maintain our devotion. So how do we do that? Well, it tells us right here in verse number six. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. How do we maintain our devotion? We acknowledge him. The word acknowledge speaks of knowing a person or becoming acquainted with that person, and that we should know and become more acquainted with the Lord Jesus Christ, to grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, to enlarge our knowledge of Him. That's how you're going to maintain your devotion. Acknowledge Him. Acknowledge Him. Get to know Him better. Get to know Him better. Eliza E. Hewitt was a lady, a dear Christian lady, who for most of her life was an invalid because of a spinal condition that she had. Well, instead of becoming bitter, she said, I'm just going to get to know the Lord better. While I'm sitting around here, I'm going to, I'm going to get to know the Lord better. And she developed an intimate relationship with the Savior. And then she wrote some words that we have in our hymn book even today. And it says this, More about Jesus let me learn 
more of His holy will discern. Spirit of God, my teacher be, showing the things of Christ to me. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of His saving fullness see. More of His love who died for me. Let me tell you something. We should acknowledge Him. In other words, we should get to know Him better. And as we get to know Him better, our hearts maintain that devotion for Him. Listen, if, if you uh, stop in getting to know the Lord better, you're actually not standing still. You're actually going backwards. We call that backsliding. We have to maintain that devotion. Have you ever met anybody who knows it all? Have you ever met anybody who says, oh, I don't need to learn anything else about that? Let me tell you something. There's always something you can learn. Did you know that? There's always something you can learn. Matter of fact, there's, uh, uh, there's plenty you can learn from anybody. You can even learn things from kids. They'll amaze you sometimes at, at what, you, what you can learn. I'm, I'm out with Joey and David sometimes, and them boys say something, and I said, my goodness. Man, that's, that is, that's deep. That's amazing. And, 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 and I'm amazed at that. Someone has said this, he who has no inclination to learn more will be very apt to think he knows enough. In other words, well, I think I already know enough about the Lord. I don't need to get to know him better. Let me tell you something. You can always get to know the Lord better. Listen, I've been saved a long time. I've been saved. I got saved when I was uh, uh, 14 years old. And I'm 60 years old today. So I've been saved a long time. I've been studying the Bible a long time. I love it. But let me tell you something. I have not arrived. I haven't even got close to arriving. I haven't got close to figuring it all out. I haven't got close to learning it all. There's still plenty more to learn. And if we cease to learn, then we're going to become contented and complacent. And the more we learn about the Lord, the more our hearts are drawn to Him and then are kept red hot. Now it says we are to acknowledge Him, but how are we to acknowledge Him? Verse number 6, in all our ways. See, the Lord is not something that we just acknowledge on Sunday. Let me tell you something. If you're really a Christian and you really want to be the kind of Christian God wants you to be, let me tell you something. When you leave here, uh, the Lord is still uh, number one in your life. On Monday, the Lord is number one on your life. And on Tuesday, and on Wednesday, and on Thursday, and on Friday. I've told you many times, the world thinks that, you know, we're supposed to put God in a box, and we're supposed to just keep him right in here, and when we leave here, that's, you know, he's, he stays in here. Well, let me tell you something. He walks with me, and he talks with me. He goes everywhere I go. I got to acknowledge him, and I must acknowledge him in all my ways. He has more than just a place in my life. He is preeminent in my life. There is nothing that I do that which, in which he is not included. Because I acknowledge him in all my ways. Our whole life should be centered around the Lord. Our whole life. You know, I'm telling you, you just cannot come to church on Sunday and sing about the Lord and hear about the Lord and talk about the Lord and then forget Him on Monday through Saturday and maintain a devoted heart, maintain your devotion. The Lord Jesus Christ should be the one that we think about when we wake up in the morning and as we go through our day and as we go to bed at night, living for Him and living a life that is pleasing to Him. Someone says this, when we acknowledge the Lord in all our ways, we are saying it is the rule of my life to do nothing without God's blessings upon it. That the Lord is a part of everything that I do. That we don't leave Him out of a single thing in our life. He goes where we go. He's involved where we are involved. If you want to maintain that devotion, you want to stay on fire for the Lord this year, then you're going to have to acknowledge Him and you're going to have to acknowledge Him in all your ways. Not just one way, not just two ways, in all your ways. And then thirdly, we see this morning the road sign that says how to make the decisions of life. How to make the decisions of life. 
What do you do? What do you do when you need guidance and direction? What do you do when you need to make a decision in your life? Well, verse 6 again says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. God has promised to guide you and direct your paths. Psalm 32, 8 says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Psalm 48, 14, for this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. God has promised a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path every day of life. None of us knows what tomorrow holds. In reality, tomorrow is dark. It's dark. Now, again, you know, we've got plans and we've got ideas, but we don't know for sure what tomorrow holds. But we're promised direction and we're promised guidance in our life. John Oxenham wrote, Not for one single day can I discern my way, but this I surely know. He who gives the day will show the way, so I securely go. Let me tell you something. I'm not worried about 2019 one bit. Because I know the Lord's already there. Someone else wrote, He does not lead me year by year, not even day by day. But step by step my path unfolds. My Lord directs my way. Tomorrow's plans I do not know. I only know this minute. But He will say, This is the way by faith. Now walk ye in it. And I am glad that it is so. Today's enough to bear. And when tomorrow comes, his grace shall far exceed its care. What need to worry then or fret? The God who gave his son holds all my moments in his hand and gives them one by one. Whatever decision you need to make this year, the Lord will direct your paths if you have acknowledged him in all your ways. When we think about the Lord leading us, Let me remind you that the Lord always directs in straight paths. Let me remind you this morning. Here we go. Let me remind you this morning. The Lord will never lead you in the wrong way. Has anybody ever gave you directions and then you said, um, and then you followed those directions and said, boy, you messed me up. Even again, those GPSs. uh, Sometimes they tell you to turn when when you don't need to be turning. Me and my wife have had some uh, uh, nice, warm discussions about some of those things from time to time. She says, well, this thing says to turn here. And I said, well, I know I'm not supposed to turn here. But it says you're supposed to turn here. The Lord will never, never, never lead us in the wrong way. Now, I'll tell you who will lead you in the wrong way, your flesh and Satan. He wants you to go the wrong way, but the Lord will never lead us in the wrong way. Matter matter of fact, you, you never have to fear the Lord leading you in a way that will bring harm to you or hurt to you in any way. Now, Satan wants to tell you that, but I'm telling you. See, God is good and God is love, and he will always lead us in straight and godly paths. But I'll tell you this much, Proverbs 22, 15 say, or 2, 15 says, whose ways are crooked and they forward in their paths. The word forward there, or crooked, means of that which is distorted, and the word forward speaks of that which is turned aside. And so left to our own ways, let me tell you what we do. We choose the wrong path. We choose the distorted path. We, we choose the paths that turn us aside from the right. If we're left to our own devices, that's why we trust in the Lord. Our roadmap for life is trusting in the Lord with all of our heart, leaning not to our own understanding, in all of our ways acknowledge him, and then he will lead us on the path that will bring us good. And he will lead us on the path that will bring us, uh, take us straight and will never bring us any harm or hurt. How many of you ever been in the woods and got lost? How many of you ever been driving and got lost? Yeah. How many of you ever been driving and, and uh, you're lost and you say, didn't we just see that thing just a minute, that, that house just a minute ago? <laughs> I know one time we was out driving somewhere and, and, and uh, Dana said, I think we've seen that place three times now. She said, I think you're lost. 
I said, I'm not lost. I'll figure it out. She said, you need to stop and ask for directions. Men, real men don't ask for directions. I guarantee you, we need direction sometimes. And that's why we need to humble ourselves. Let me tell you something. We, we, we want to do it our way. Uh, we'll get lost. I'm telling you. You will get lost. You will get lost. But you do it God's way, you will never get lost. You will never get lost. He says he'll direct thy paths. Let me tell you what else God will, what kind of paths God will give you. He'll, he'll give you straight and direct paths, uh, proper paths, but he'll also give you prosperous paths. God will never take you down a dead-end road. He will always lead you in paths for his good and for his glory. I look around in this world and I see a lot of people Boy, they have wasted their lives. They're on their own path, and my goodness, what a mess they have made of it. What a mess. Wasted and ruined lives. Sorrow and shame that has come their way. But let me tell you something. Let God direct your paths. Let God direct your paths. When you get finished with God directing your paths, you'll not have a single regret. You'll, you'll not have a single complaint I love Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, thy way, thy way, thy road, thy travels prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So you want a road map for 2019? Here it is. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. When difficulties come, don't lean to your own understanding. Trust in Him. To stay warm and stay hot for the Lord. To be devoted to the Lord. Acknowledge Him in all your ways. And then the Bible says, when we get ready to make decisions and need guidance, He says He'll direct your paths. And He'll always lead you in the proper way as we enter 2019.